a walking tour of Waikiki's business district. I'm Chris, this is the Traveling Princess, and in this video, we're gonna walk you down Waikiki's main business street. And I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see where I'm walking instead of looking at me the whole time. We are starting this walk in front of the Hyatt Regency Hotel, and this is right across the street from Kuhio Beach Park, and the Weston Moana Surfrider. If you want to see what's going on at the beach, I've got a whole walking tour of the beach from a couple years ago. The beach hasn't changed all that much, except maybe there's a little less sand right now, but I really want to take you down the business district street so you can see how things have changed due to the pandemic. I am recording this video on June 9th, which is a Wednesday and uh, you'll see this in just a couple days from now. Now one of the big differences visiting Waikiki right now walking down this main street is there are, while there's still a lot of people here, there's a lot less than there used to be. In particular there's a lot less Japanese tourists uh, and although Hawaii is open to tourists from Japan Japanese still have to quarantine for 14 days when they go back to Japan. So there aren't many Japanese tourists. So you won't see any of the Waikiki draw trolleys, the Oli Oli buses, and the stores that you see on the right and the left. Almost all of them have shortened their hours. Like if we take a look in the UGG store right here, you'll see that the UGG store has these really short hours in fact, on Wednesday and Thursday today, they are closed entirely. That's fairly typical as to what you're gonna see. Now on the left, this is the Weston Moana Surfrider Hotel. This is one of the original hotels in Waikiki. Actually not one of, it is the original hotel in Waikiki. In particular, the Moana Hotel, which is kind of the old classic colonial looking hotel. It was then joined to this ugly looking hotel that I'll call the Surf Rider to make a single complex. Now, if you're looking for a Japanese convenience store, there's a location of Lawson Station right there. This is a small one. There's actually two in Waikiki, and I'll have a video coming out later to take you on a walkthrough of the larger Lawson Station in the Sheraton, which I think is the best Japanese convenience store in the USA. And now, the Sheraton that I mentioned, it's the big Sheraton on the ocean, not to be confused with the Sheraton Princess Hotel right here. This one is a little lower end Sheraton, but interestingly enough, if you are staying at the Western Moana Surfrider right here, because it's oceanfront, it was built a long time ago. They didn't really plan for parking, and so their parking garage for the Weston is actually across the street at the Sheraton. Now, many of the intersections, including this one in Waikiki, are kind of scramble crossings, so all the traffic stops and then everybody crosses, so that's what we just did right there. And, one of the things that there used to be a lot of in Waikiki are these little um, news racks that had like coupons and Japanese magazines. You can see they're really empty right now. They haven't been producing all the tourist magazines just due to the lack of tourists here. Taxi cabs have come back in full force. We see a limousine right here. Some of the street vendors are back. We'll see the carts as well. And uh, the croc store is open here in front of the Sheraton. Also, the last few years, maybe a couple years, a lot of years, uh, Honolulu, Oahu's rolled out these Bicky bikes. They are kind of their metropolitan bike system. You can rent them uh, by the hour and just return them to one of these racks. They do not have the bikes that you can just drop off anywhere, um, but they do have some of the scooters, these electric scooters that I've seen people ride that I've, I've nearly gotten run over by. In this building of the Western Moana Surf Rider, this is their tall, new newest building. There used to be a location of Ramoa luggage suitcases here. It has moved a little further down the way into the 
Royal Hawaiian Center. Next to the Western Moana Surfrider Hotel is the Outrigger Waikiki. If you are looking for Duke's Hawaii, the most kind of party atmosphere for a restaurant, you can check out the Outrigger Waikiki. Great evening live entertainment there. Dinner, drinks, take a while. Now, this is the first ABC store that I'm pointing out, but the ABC stores in Waikiki have everything a tourist would ever need right there. And these are these uh, $1 electric scooters that I talked about that I, I nearly got run over by earlier. On the right hand side, this is the International Marketplace Shopping Mall. This uh, used to be kind of like a swap meet type thing with a lot of vendors. Uh, now it's a big upscale shopping mall. This is pretty neat to check out. In the back, there's a Japanese supermarket, uh, Mitsua. There's also some good coffee, good restaurants in there. Check that out. That seems to be going pretty strong. Most of those places seem to be doing their regular hours. Now on the back side of the International Marketplace, one block further down Kuhio, is a new location of Ice Monster. It's a Taiwanese shave ice chain. I think it's the Japanese version. If you're looking for some Taiwanese shave ice instead of uh, Hawaiian shave ice, you can check that out here. Now on the right, this is the Maui Brewing Company. It just looks well shut. There's a lot of things on this main street that are just shut and look like they haven't been open for a year. On the left hand side is the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. I think this is the coolest shopping center in Waikiki and it's right behind it is the Royal Hawaiian Hotel. It's that tower with the pink balconies. There's a location of Cheesecake Factory popular with the tourists. Oh, I want to show you Macy's and show you just how closed this place is. Uh, they close these doors with some chains and they don't open until noon. So uh, they're currently opening at noon and closing until 8 p.m. We've got a couple of friendly police officers coming down here on their ATVs, keeping the peace. I think with the pandemic at nighttime in particular, when everything's closed and there's less tourists, things get slightly weird with kind of weird people. I've seen a bit more of the population who just kind of lives on the beach and lives around here more so than any other trip or visit that I've been on. Now in this Royal Hawaiian Center on the left, you can see the Apple store in Waikiki. So if you need to get any of your Apple stuff fixed, you can do it right there. If you're looking for dim sum, there's a great dim sum place in the Royal Hawaiian Center known as Tim Hawan. And there's also a pretty good food court in the central building. On the right hand side, we've got a few more shops. There's a Rip Curl surf shop. There's Coco Cove, which is a, another convenience store. There are a lot of convenience stores here. And then the Ramoa store that I mentioned earlier moved in just right there. Now, what used to be kind of rem remnants of the international marketplace has moved down some of these lanes. There's this alley here that says Duke's Marketplace, 50 vendors back down that little uh, hallway. On the right, we just passed a Lululemon. Now I should point out that if you're looking at people walking down here saying, some people wearing masks, some people aren't. Uh, a couple weeks ago in Hawaii, they announced that you don't need to wear masks outside. So masks are no longer required outside, though they are required inside, though many people are still choosing to wear them outside. Uh, this is a delivery van for Eskimo Candy, which is a kind of fish shop. I just thought that's a really interesting painting or mermaid or something like that on there. Now here we have another one of Waikiki's Scramble Crossings. This is, I would call this the center of the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center. There's a popular coffee shop up there called Island Vintage Coffee. They often do hula lessons and hula shows back there, though I haven't seen any of those currently running due to the pandemic. And uh, now those electric scooters that I mentioned, there's signs that say no bicycling, skateboarding, roller skating on the sidewalk, which would include those electric scooters. 
that we've dearly gotten run over by, but I think people find those just, that's a, just a convenient place to ride them. All right, we'll go ahead and cross the street now. Oh, if you're looking for Masubi, uh, just down this street to the right of kind of that central part of the Royal Hawaiian Center is a Masubi Cafe that makes pretty good Masubis. If you're looking for something cheap, quick, and fast, you can check that out. Well, you'll probably find the Masubis cheaper at 7-Eleven or something, but cheap for Waikiki. On the right, we have the Waikiki Shopping Plaza. This place is super dead. In particular, the Japanese food hall right here, which is usually down there. It's just shut. Doesn't look like it's opened in a while. This is where they used to do fire knife dances in there. We haven't seen that. The Honolulu Cookie Company doesn't open till 11 a.m. When we walked around here last night, some of the Honolulu Cookie Companies also closed really early. Now, in just a week or two from now, so actually a week or now, a few days from now, on June 15th, they've announced that inter-island travel in Hawaii will no longer require a quarantine or COVID-19 test. So if you're coming to Hawaii, you will just have to get the first COVID-19 negative test to get to the islands, and then you can travel around the islands without getting any COVID-19 test. Now, I want to point out that uh, over here, the Royal Hawaiian Center, it's like three different buildings that are connected to each other. And if you go on the second or third floor, they cross over the streets. Uh, and so you don't have to wait for the stoplights if you're up on that second or third floor. And then behind the Royal Hawaiian Center, the high rise you see over there on the left, that's the Sheraton Hotel that has the Lawson Station, the best Japanese convenience store. Looking down this street over here, this is a big duty-free shop that takes up like nearly this whole block. The duty-free shop is shut and closed. That was also a big kind of transit spot for the Waikiki trolley, where the Waikiki trolley would stop and uh, let up people. We're going to go ahead and cross the scramble now diagonally <laughs> because we can. You know, in the U.S., there aren't a lot of these scramble crossings. The term scramble crossing comes from uh, Tokyo where they have the famous scramble crossing in Shibuya. These crossings, there's not a lot of great places to see them from the sky. Uh, but now we're walking right here alongside the Royal Hawaiian Center, which takes up those three blocks. At nighttime, these torches are on, which gives it a cool kind of vibe but uh, the torches in the other part of Waikiki Beach in front of the Hyatt and the Marriott, they have not turned those on yet. And a couple tall buildings you see back there, that's the uh, Ritz-Carlton Residences, one of the kind of newest developments in Waikiki. On the left, we've got some upscale shops. We've got Tiffany, they are cleaning the Tiffany sign, because everything by the beach gets dirty very quickly if it's not cleaned <laughs> continuously. There's a very large fire truck. My color, fire trucks here are yellow. And this one is one of those uh, things that actually has the guy who drives in the back because it's so long. They need these ladder trucks to go up uh, all the high rise buildings. Now, this street, Lure Street, has kind of one of the neatest other vibe shopping centers just down it. Um, and that'll get you to the beach if you go that way. And by the way, looking up at that Ritz Carlton residence, I just, I love the shape of that building. It has kind of like, it's like got more stuff on the top than it does on the bottom. That's interesting. Oh, that shopping center I mentioned to the left is called Waikiki Beach Walk. And now this section of uh, the main street has a lot of smaller stores. There were a lot of souvenir shops. There were a lot more local stores. A lot of these on the right and left have just gone out of business. There's also a lot of big uh, luxury stores that were just further up a block or two and those are gone as well. There's a fire truck going by and so I'm just gonna let you listen to that for a moment and come back after the fire truck comes by.
and and if you're in need of a pharmacy there's a location of long's drugs right here this is a two-story one this is the one i stop at if i need any drugs oh there's a fountain that i need to turn my lens away from and coming up right here on the left on this intersection we have a hard rock cafe hard rock cafe was open uh, but there's a few other restaurants that are on this little corner that just aren't open uh, in particular we were looking forward to trying out bills on this trip which is a australian kind of like breakfast or pancake chain but no bills for us and that is going to bring us to the end of this walk. Oh, I'm really, really dark. Let me go this way. The end of this walk because we have reached our lunch spot. Tonkatsu Ginza Byron just down this street. We have an 11 o'clock reservation. It's in like three minutes, so we better get going. If you want to see all about that katsu that we love, well, you'll see a video for that coming up. If you want to see more videos about Hawaii, you can click right here for our entire Hawaii playlist. As usually, we won't say goodbye because we'll see you in that video.